Hello again and welcome to this new section where we have um, the commitment to discuss and share the presence of the great master, Count de Saint-Germain, um, in his life as Joseph, the father of Jesus. And we know Joseph as a very enigmatic and silent figure who in a way accepts to safeguard the seed that is, has been implanted in the womb of Mary and as such he is um, the one that is responsible of taking the family with the, the, the little baby in the womb of Mary out of the region of the kingdom of Herodes into the safety in, of Egypt. And then we know that he's a carpenter and that he um, in a way uh, teaches Jesus during his first years of life, but then he fades away in the history of the New Testament and we lose track of him. Who is Joseph in fact? Joseph is no, no other than a past incarnation of Master Saint Germain that accepted to help the transition of humanity from the era of Arius to the era of Pisces and he conceived a plan um, where he could mentor and assist the descent of the Christ energy to be shared in the human kingdom and the other kingdoms of nature within the era of Pisces. And Joseph was a great initiate. He was not just a common and ordinary carpenter. He cooperated to conceive and prepare Jesus in his first seven years of life so that he could then become himself training and students in the main schools of ancient mysteries. Joseph was, was said to belong to the region of Nazareth and to be a carpenter, but he was also, and it was his social uh, life um, and public life, but he was also a great um, teacher from um, the ritualistic temples, both in Egypt and in the region called them Assyria, which is um, the region that now encompasses a part of Turkey, Syria, Iran and Iraq. He himself belonged to the dynasty of David and as such you know, he is the link that allows also the blood to perpetuate itself and to fulfill for the aid of Pisces the prophecy that the line of Solomon, the great king and magician, would be perpetuated and would renovate itself also for, for the new era. And he was um, also a Nazarene. And by Nazarene, um, we usually understand an inhabitant of the small town of Nazareth, in what is today Palestine. But Nazarene is not just a geographical region or a town, but it's also um, a very secretive um, order of initiates that are the custodian of the sacred knowledge. And um, if we look into the etymology of the word Nazarene, Nazar means to consecrate. In, in ancient Hebrew and Aramean language. And Zara means to sow. So the Nazarenes are those that are consecrated to scatter the seeds. What seeds? The seeds of the ancient knowledge. So they're the ones that are safeguarding and also disseminating, disseminating the sacred wisdom. And as a, as a Nazarene, okay, um, Joseph was 
embodying this function and as he safeguarding and preserve the seed that was growing within the womb of Mary, he also safeguarded and preserved the sacred knowledge in the occult traditions. And so these Nazarenes were great initiates. They had access to um, very sacred libraries <laughs> um, in all the old world and they were preserving this, this knowledge and perpetuating it and disseminating it, disseminating it through selected students and a line of, of continuity for future generations. So they did not go into specific religion. The Nazarenes were not going through the Judaic religion or later on through Christianity or through a specific um, ancient tradition, but they were following the different paths, path of, of light, and they were committed to see the light of divinity in all the different paths. So they did not identify themselves either internally with any religions or also externally. When you looked at them functioning in society, they fulfill a role of service in their community and they were working occultly within. And there was nothing that you could see externally that could associate them to any single line path of wisdom. Because they are committed up to today to follow the one in its many ways of expression. So they cannot appear physically with any symbol that attaches them to any straight light line of, of wisdom, differentiating them or leaving aside other paths. And as such, they are very simple in their approach and the, they're committed to working in silence, to be generous, to work on continuous attitude of service, um, to protect those in need, to heal yeah, and to teach. They are committed and dedicated to preserving the truth. And they always work for the wellness of everybody. So this is a position of continuous balance and it is sometimes expressed outside by a very, very single um, trend that they, they have. And it is that they comb their hair with a line in the middle and separate it in two. To mean that they are walking the middle path without committing to any line, but just committing themselves to the middle path where you can see divinity in everywhere. This is the way that Maitreya also appears and there Maitreya himself uh, appears as a, as a Nazarene and um, this is the way they recognize each other and this is the way that we can recognize uh, them by their silence, generosity and this physical appearance. The Nazarenes exist in all paths of life and um, Joseph as a, as a Nazarene was in charge of safeguarding the seed of what will be, what would be the future master and receptacle and of the, um, the energy of the, of the descent, of the Christ energy. And as such, when the seed was in danger, he took it to the ancient temples of Egypt, where he was himself a teacher and preceptor, and he safeguarded Jesus outside 
of the territory of Herodotus. And he also was in charge of all the ritualistic functioning of Jesus until he was seven years of age. And because himself, he was, um, a, he had been a student and an initiated from three main um, schools um, in the Asian world. And this was the Celtic school with the magic of nature and safeguarding, safeguardians of the moon tradition, the Egyptian school with the magic related to the stars, to Sirio, and safeguarders of the Atlantean mysteries, and the occult schools in the high Himalayas, and in Nepal and India, safeguarding of the um, White Brotherhood, and all the lineage coming from um, descended masters. So, Jesus was initiated by Chaucer into these traditions and he was the one that could open um, the door of these schools to, to Jesus. Jesus lived with uh, Chaucer until he was seven years of age. From seven to fourteen, Chaucer had already committed to prepare himself for higher missions, so his presence was still there in planet Earth, but he was less um, physically present uh, for bringing up of Jesus. So gradually he was transferred to the other side of his family, also uh, a sacred tradition that was through Mary, and Anna and her grandmother um, related to the to the tradition of these things. From seven to fourteen, during his adolescence, then Jesus lives mostly within the same community with his mother and grandmother and all the Senian the Senian people. So um, we thought it was important to share with you this less known and more mysterious um, information about Joseph, his work, the work of this great and dominant soul that we know today as Master Saint Germain, helping the inauguration of the Pisian age and the descent, preparing the, the container um, for the descent of the, of the Christ energies and how he was very, very important in um, the initial years of, of the life of, of Master Jesus. And Master Jesus has, and Mary as well, has been in in the previous era when the era of Aries had started. They had been his students in the transition from Taurus to to Aries in the higher zones of the area of Nepal. So um, this is this is the occult side of the previous lives as Joseph of we now we know as Countess and Germain. Thank you for being there. Thank you for receiving this knowledge and we hope to see you for the next chapter where we will explain and discuss the present um, work and functioning of Master of Saint Germain helping the transition from Pisces to Aquarius. Thank you very much. May you be blessed by the presence of the Masters and see you in the next meeting.